Hey guys, I'm sorry about the, the video delay. Um, I didn't expect to get so caught up with everything else, and I really haven't had time to um, do any uh, videos. But everyone's out of the house right now, and so hopefully I'll be able to get a video done. And I don't know about the rest of the series. Um, I'm, I'm in New Mexico right now, visiting my, my, uh, my uncle and my mom and etc. And I have been since uh, a little bit before I started this channel. So I'll be back on, I'll be back in New Hampshire in, on uh, Thursday, but then I'll be spending a few days um, with my girlfriend on Friday and Saturday, and then I'm not getting back to college till Monday. So I don't know what exactly the time frame of finishing the series will be, um, but that's, you know, that, that's just to leave a context of things are up in the air right now. Um, and I'm going to try to get down the part that I do have down, which is 2.3. Uh, from part two and then uh, from there I don't know where I'll go but um, hopefully hopefully I'll be able to finish the series off soon so um, as far as what's coming up next um, I just want to let everyone know that I will be kind of divulging from what I'm doing right now talking about I'll be talking about uh, well not really diverting from anything but I'll be talking about the history of cooperatives uh, in order to help out a good friend of mine named Jack so we'll look out for that I don't know when that will be around but it should be done before th this month hopefully um, it won't be like some complex, systematic, uh, full historical look at cooperatives. Uh, I haven't decided what format it will be in, um, but I'll be working on that as well. So anyway, let's get into 2.3. I don't want to waste too much time. Um, sorry about that whole introduction, but I had to kind of clear up a few things I felt. So at 2.3 on this video, um, I'm going to be talking about In Defense of Voting, sort of, Part 2 by Roderick Long. And uh, he has a few more things to say. Um, about sort of more practical elements, uh, but I think there are a few more I don't really remember. But I haven't looked over the script in a while, so I'll probably be looking at it a lot. Um, but here we go. First thing that I quote is, so where do I disagree? And uh, where do I disagree with the voluntarist argument against voting? Uh, I'm thinking. It's, well, it seems to me that in situations where a bottom-up component does exist, but still fall, fall, falls far short of being powerful enough to undermine the state unaided, a top-down component can serve to fill the gra gap to make up the difference. End quote. Again, the bottom-up market means or economic means towards achieving free society are being opposed in the end for long. Now, I'm not sure why a top-down component could serve a bottom-up way of achieving free society. If anything, it seems like they would not reduce in any great diversification and unity in abolishing the state, but a positively div 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 divisiveness excuse me, over strategy. In the end, both areas of strategy would cancel each other out or result in less of a strategy than one before or then before. Either way, a top-down solution cannot be considered for both practical and moral reasons, which is why voting should also be opposed. Another quote. My answer is that my faith in the power of the free market is undiminished, but in case you haven't noticed, we don't have a free market. By the way, I hate these kind of arguments. What, what we have is a deeply regulated and crippled market, and it is that in which the voluntarists are asking us to have faith. Now, I always hate these arguments, and, and I just said that, but I want to extrapolate, because Whenever someone says, well, in case you haven't noticed, dot, 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 or, you know, we don't have what you're talking about, that's not the point. The point is to get there. And we can't rely on crippled markets and deeply regulated markets to get us there. We have to build our own, build uh, within the shell the old. We can't rely on crippled markets and deeply regulated markets. We have to strive towards um, a free market, a truly free market. So anyway, I disagree, and I think that the voluntarist is asking for faith in something Long already has faith in, that is the creation of a truly free market is possible. Long is once again misapplying the voluntarist argument, although I, I doubt he's doing it on purpose, obviously. Now, uh, quote, surely would be absurd as to argue, uh, argue as follows. We libertarians claim to recognize this period of private over public solutions, but when we drive to work in the morning, we use the public roads. How unimaginative. When we are so bold and consistently libertarian in other areas, why do we pick such an unlibertarian strategy for getting to work? Don't we know that private roads are better than public ones? All right then, from now on, if we really believe what we preach, we should only use private roads for driving to work. Of course, private roads are of course private roads are superior for getting to work, a strategy for getting to work. But the power of government has created a severe shortage of private roads and has thus prevented us from making the use of the best strategy. The same applies to purely non-political strategies for dismantling the state. I don't see how that applies at all, but uh, that's the end of that quote. And um, it sure would, but it sure would be ridiculous. But that's not the argument the voluntarist or other like him, like myself, or, or others like the voluntarist, like myself, faces if he makes such an argument. 
There is no shortage of tactics outside of political action. And if you want to talk about reality, let's talk about the lack of reality that voting conveys. It conveys the belief that the state is the problem, but also the solution. It can be used for both ends if only the right people were in it. This is the same thing that minarchists are always saying. The state would be a great idea if only the right people were in it. The, and, and state socialists say the same thing. And statists of all flavors say the same thing. If only the right people, that's that's all the state is about for them. The right people, the right regulations, the right tactics, the, the right whatever, the right policemen. Um, but the, the truth is, the state is inherently corrupt and evil. There's no right people to be in it. Um, if you really fight for getting into office and getting people more political power over you, it's only going to consume you. And, and I, I just don't see Long's argument here. Quote, where I part company with the voluntarists is in thinking, first, that a mixed approach, partly top-down, part bottom-up, could also succeed, and second, that this mixed approach is more likely than the purely bottom-up approach to be predictable in the foreseeable future. End quote. I just don't see how this follows, nor does Long explain how it could be here other than implying diversity is somehow more important and strategically viable because it's more diverse. Again, Long is just reducing his arguments to diversity for the sake of diversity. We shouldn't have that. We should have coherent, solid strategies that produce a substantial, positive re net result for libertarians. Quote, the voluntarist seems to assume that top-down and bottom-up uh, approaches to libertarian activism are in, activism are in com competition, even in conflict, rather than being essentially complementary. This is actually what I just argued. Yet throughout history, every successful liberatory, uh, liberatory movement I can think of, from the abolition of the slave trade and the end of British rule in the American colonies to the emancipation of women and the triumph of the Anti-Corn Law League, has won the day through a combination of top-down and bottom-up strategy. I see no reason to expect the triumph of libertarianism to be different. This is a good argument. This is actually a good argument. One of the, probably one of the best he's had. But this is... Um, the fact of the matter is that this liber, uh, liberatory movement we as libertarians are not looking for changes within the law, but without such state law. And so we are looking for an entirely, completely diff different social, cultural, and political revolution than all these things. Not that, no, not that one, um, not one that's similar to the historical examples Long has provided. And so I think his claims, while logical and sensible, fail to apply to the radical libertarians' ideas. A misconception of the libertarian's identity with voting is Long's next critique, but I could hardly care about that, for as I pointed out, other means can be used for education than the obviously, at least morally and practically questionable uh, tactic of voting. Quote, Voluntarists often argue that by engaging in political action, libertarians are sanctioning the state. And here's a quote by George Smith, I believe. To run for a support ca candidate for political offices to grant legitimacy to the very thing we are attempting to strip of legitimacy. The hypocrisy is there for all to see. Political power is legitimized throughout the, through the electoral process. The vote sanctifies injustice. The vote is the method by which the, main, the state maintains its delusion of legitimacy. There is no way a leg, uh, libertarian organization can assail the legitimacy of the state while soliciting vote. Party Dialogue, pages 19 to 20. And then Long says, but this critique is ambiguous. Now I want to stop it there and say I actually agree with Long. This quote is ambiguous, and I hardly see any part of the quote, as Long provides it at least, where it's substantiated, where, where, is, where George Smith's um, views are substantiated. To continue, quote, does it mean that political action count as an actual endorsement of the, state by, of the state by libertarians, or only that it's likely to be misperceived as such? The former alternative, that political action signifies genuine endorsement, is reminiscent of those tacit consent theories for which voluntarists ordinarily have only contempt. Lysander Smooter, one of the voluntarists' own, fa own favorite authorities, disposes of this notion nicely. And Lysander Spooner, in No Treason, number 6, The Constitution of No Authority, says, To take a man's property without his consent, and then to infer his consent because he attempts to buy voting to prevent that property from being used to his injury is a very insufficient proof of his consent to support the Constitution. End quote. This is true. I actually feel like this tacit obligation to approve of the state is actual, uh, actually is not fair. It sounds like a very, it sounds like a libertarian rehashing of the social contract theory as it applies to voting. And if that sounds very wrong to you, then you're not alone. We should tell the public, we libertarians are all committed to changing society through education and life. But some of us, this is a quote by Long, but some of us seek to work through the political process. There is a friendly disagreement, both ethical and strategic, among libertarians as to the legitimacy of this approach. Some libertarians condemn any association with the state as inappropriate. Others consider it a permissible defensive option to try and take over the state and dismantle from within. We invite you to join us in this conversation. Before I actually say that I agree, because I do, I actually have a small disagreement. This is a false dichotomy. 
there are people in between. I actually am not completely opposed to political action of all sorts. Uh, but I'll leave it at that. I'm just saying there are some people who are in between like me. I don't say any association with the state is inappropriate because that's just lunacy. But nor do I say that coming, going in from within and tearing the Leviathan from within is appropriate. Now, I would never, and this is important, so uh, I hope everyone pays attention to this part. I would never stop one from voting. Despite my moral or practical concerns or reservations about voting, I may try to convince said voter that their actions are not likely to induce change and in the long run could prove highly contra contrary to their ends and perhaps at some level immoral. But I would not use force and eventually just leave it as a disagreement in tactics. Uh, long is quoted here. Uh, I'm quoting Long again. If I were a libertarian politician, <laughs> And someone, and he didn't shudder, I, I'm just shuddering. And someone raised with me the issue of the oath of office. I would answer as follows. When I am sworn in, I will take the oath of office honestly and sincerely and will fill it to the best, fulfill it to the best of my ability. Naturally, however, I will also respect the common consensus universally acknowledged since the Nuremberg trials that no oath to uphold the law can justify any agent of the government engaging in or sanctioning criminal aggression. The problem here is, of course, government tries to confuse about what's criminal and what's not, so it doesn't really matter that this oath matters. But The last thing I'd like to say about this, and Log's perception of voting, is that while it has many valid points, most of them fail in the end, or fall flat under scrutiny to the basic points of politics or governmental politics in general, that Long would otherwise be happy to mention. He'd otherwise be happy to say, well, no, the political means are illegitimate, they're immoral, they're blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to voting, becoming a politician and getting within the system itself, I don't see how Long justifies it, and he doesn't really give any reasons. You know, not that I blame him for not, you know, going completely um, full scale with with his attack on on the our attacks against voting, but um, but for the record, and I just want to close here, I think such an oath would be cons uh, would be consistent. But honestly, who needs consistency when you're going to vote anyway? So that's uh, part two for everybody. Um, Hopefully I will have part three out either later today or tomorrow. Um, part three will be on my own views. They will be extrapolated on my general views, you know, whether I'm against politics, uh, dealing with misconceptions. And then number four will deal with the alternatives to voting. And then that will be it. I'll start with uh, the cooperatives, uh, history of worker, not worker cooperatives, but cooperatives in general. And I'll talk about what they are and what they mean. And, um, so I don't think I'll have any links besides the blog that I put in. But um, I'll look over this video, and if I decide otherwise, you'll know. All right, so thanks. See you.